Hey, this is Mike from It's Relational. Thanks for jumping on. I can't wait for you to hear this message that I recently presented at the church that I pastor on forgiveness. How to forgive from the heart, not just the head. Many times we think that we've forgiven somebody, but then all of a sudden something happens and those same old emotions rise to the surface. We're thinking some of those negative thoughts about that person. We realize that maybe we said the words, maybe we forgave from our head, but we didn't forgive from our heart. So how do you do that? I'm going to share that message with you in just a moment. It's about a 20-minute version of the original 40-minute message. So if you want to get the whole thing, uh, it's in, the link is in the description, as well as so many other resources on marriage and parenting, some original music. So make sure you hit the su subscribe button. And all those resources are free. There's no charge at all. So hit subscribe. And uh, we'll look forward to see it, seeing you on some other videos. All right, are you ready? Here we go. How to forgive from the heart, not just the head. What do you do when you've been mistreated by somebody? Don't answer that. <laughs> uh, how do you feel when somebody treats you unfairly? Um, when they maybe damage your reputation, when they offend you, when they do something that, that really hurts. Have you ever felt shortchanged? You've invested more in something than you've been given back. You poured into people more than they gave you back. And maybe it's not just what people do to us. Sometimes we do it to ourselves because maybe we compare ourselves to somebody else. We see another married couple and we're like, oh, they're so, they're so happy, they're talking so much, they're just so in love, and we turn over to our spouse and we don't know what to say. You're on scrolling through social media and you see all these other people having so much fun and they're going some kind of vacay and you're like, ah, oh, I wish I had that, I wish we had that, I feel like I'm getting gypped, I feel like I'm getting ripped off. Or maybe you've been married for 30 years and now he doesn't want anything to do with you or she doesn't want anything, she's gone. Or maybe you gave your heart and soul to a company for 35 years and now they don't want you anymore. They call it downsizing, which is supposed to make it easier, but truth is they just, they really don't want you anymore. There's a bunch of people, maybe an auditorium filled with people who walk around having been taken advantage of, having been shortchanged, feeling like something has been taken from them, stolen from them, and so now they kind of walk through life like, you owe me. You, you owe me. I gave my part. I, I expect at least something. You owe me. So what do we do with it? You have to forgive. But Jesus doesn't use that word forgive. He uses a phrase. Do you know how Jesus defines forgiveness? Is by that phrase. I cancel your debt. You don't owe me anymore. I feel like you stole something from me. I feel like you shortchanged me. I feel like maybe you ripped me off. But I've decided that you don't owe me anymore. I cancel your debt. That's what forgiveness really is. When you look at your own hurt, your unmet expectations, your disappointments, maybe your family background, your past, all the baggage that you brought, to, that you carry on in life, you bring it to relationships, when you think of it, think of it in terms that someone has taken from you, they've, they've stolen from you, they've, they've maybe robbed you, and so... They owe you. That's why we say, you owe me an apology. You owe it to me to be the spiritual leader of our home. Man, how many of you heard that through the years? You, you owe it to me to be the spiritual. I mean, we started out that way. We used to pray. We used to have devotion. We go to church. Now you don't even show up. You owe it to, to me to spend time with me. Huh. Huh. You used to? I was high up on your priority list, and now... Everything else comes first. You, you owe it to me to, to want to spend some time with me. You owe it to me to quit using, quit drinking. You owe it to me to treat me with respect, to not humiliate me in public. You owe it 
to me to keep your job, to support the family. You, you owe that to us. You owe that to me. And so we go through life feeling like you owe it to me. And as long as that's in there, <laughs> as long as that thought, that feeling, that emotion that's attached to this, that whatever that is, guess what? There's not going to be healing. There's not going to be any for- forgiveness in there. And anybody who bumps into that wound is going to now feel your pain. Your hurt is going to become their hurt. So how long are you, how long am I going to live with that poison inside of us? And so now the master called this servant in, and he was angry. And he said, aren't you the guy that I just forgave? I canceled millions of dollars of your debt. Shouldn't you at least have mercy, have pity, and cancel the debt of what somebody owes you? And then Jesus says these incredibly sobering, in-your-face statement. He says, This is how your heavenly Father will treat you if you don't forgive your brother and sister from your heart. Not just your head, because sometimes they, oh, I've I've, I've forgiven them. I've I've, I've dealt with that. I've forgiven them. But oh, somebody just pricks that wound, bumps into that wound. Oh, it's right back up there, and you're spewing out all kinds of stuff. You and I lost our right not to forgive at the cross. We lost our right. Because think about it. You've been forgiven for so much. I've been forgiven so much. An insurmountable debt. We could never pay God back. We've been imprisoned in our own sinfulness. So God, what did he do? He sent his son, Jesus Christ. Clothed in flesh, But blood flowing through him and through the currency of his own blood, he made the payment. He took the keys from heaven. He unlocked those prison doors of sin. He opened it up and said, come on. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. And he said, I cancel your debt. You don't owe me anymore. That's the gospel. That's the gospel good news. Right. And see, that's why Jesus said, this is how the kingdom of heaven is like. It might not be like your family it was. It might not be like your experience at church. It might not be like your experience at work or in your marriage or, or with your friends, but this is what the kingdom of God is like. I cancel your debt. You don't owe me anything. You're free and I'm free. We say, God, in light of what you've done for me, You've canceled my debts. I am choosing to cancel the debts of those around me. You see, it's more than just letting somebody off the hook for something that they did. Really what's at stake is your own freedom, the freedom from the prison of your own unforgiveness. Relationally, you're going to have some toxicity in your own relationships. The husband you have now is going to pay the price for the person who abused you when you were young. Men, you're truly going to end up like a caveman because that's the only safe place you can go to run. But you know how dark it is in that cave and how alone it is in that cave. Unable to confront and know what to do with those emotions that you've been taught to stuff all of your life and be tough. Forgiveness as it benefits the one who's been hurt. This isn't about getting two people together and you know laying everything out, all, all the cards on the table, unscrambling all the eggs, tying up all the loose ends in the relationship. It's not about that. You may not have a relationship with them now or forever. And for some of you, that might be the appropriate boundary that you need. Maybe they're not even alive anymore. Maybe they're not in your life. But you still have to forgive. Because you're the one carrying that offense. You're carrying that weight. And you, you're going to have to learn how to forgive without receiving an apology. 
Isn't that hard? You're waiting for them to take the first step and say, well, you know, I am sorry. I was, no, you're going to have to learn to forgive without receiving an apology and without seeing any signs that they've changed, that there's reconciliation, or that they even agree or respond to you. But you still have to forgive. You have to do it for your own freedom. See, what we normally do is we forgive an event. I I forgive my mom or my dad for abandoning the family. I forgive my sister for taking more of of the inheritance than was her share. I I forgive so-and-so across town for stealing my business. You know, whatever. We can identify the event. But if we stop there, that's only forgiveness from the head. We said the words, "I, I I forgive you, but we really don't feel it. How do you get from the head to the heart when it comes to forgiveness? You have to do this next thing. You have to identify what was taken, what was stolen. Maybe maybe an easier way to put it is what you missed out on. Because, Because your mom and dad, or mom or dad, abandoned the family, what did you miss out on? Maybe you missed out on a dad coming alongside you putting his shoulder around you when you start struck out for three times in a row. Maybe you missed out on a mom taking care of you when you were sick because you always had to take care of your younger siblings because she wasn't there. I'll tell you what you stole from me. You stole my reputation. Do you know how long it had to take me to build back my credibility, to build back my financial credit? You ruined my credit. You spread lies and gossip about me. You know, that's, that's what I lost. You know what I lost? I lost what it was like to have a whole family around the holidays. I feel like a ping pong ball having to go to this family and that side of the family. and That's what I missed out on. It's one thing to forgive an event. Yes, I forgive my dad or my mom for leaving. But to get deeper, you've got to Go to the emotion. you got to move from the event and into the emotion. And, and, and really what you have to do, you got to feel it. you got to learn to express it. Don't stuff it. Don't stuff it. you got to express it. Because then you have to mourn it. You have to mourn the loss of it. And here's why. Because the second thing is this. To cancel the debt, Make a decision that they don't owe you anymore. And here's why. Because whatever was taken from you, whatever you missed out on, whatever you lost, guess what? They can't pay you back anyways. You have to come to the point where you realize, my dad can't give me my childhood back. That person who stole my innocence and I've been twisted sexually ever since, they can't they can't give me my innocence back. So you have to get to the point where you say, how long am I going to hold on to this? They can't, they can't pay me back anyways. So I'm going to choose to cancel the debt. They don't owe me anyways because it's unrepayable. You know, your ex can't give you those years back. You're... you're adult now can't come back, even if they're groveling, they're coming with, uh, on their knees and they're repenting and, and, and they promise to never use again. They can't give you back those years when they were 15 and 16 and they made your life hell on earth. That debt is unrepayable. So what are you going to do with it? Continue to carry that around with you or can you make a decision to cancel that debt? How long are you going to live in torment to something that cannot be undone? And Jesus is saying, cancel the debt. Tell them, you don't owe me anymore. Otherwise, as he said in that last verse we read, you'll be the one who suffers. Now, you might think, well... (laughs) Oh, I've done that before, Pastor Mike. I've heard sermons on forgiveness, and I've, I've gone through the motions. What if I have those thoughts and feelings again? You're watching a movie, and all of a sudden it reminds you of something in your past, or you, know, you see something out in public, and you're like, oh, it just, oh, it's like a knife in there. What do I do with those thoughts and those emotions? You're going to have them. 
But that's when every time you, you see that or feel that, you say that line, I cancel your debt. You don't owe me anymore. You may have to say that over and over because here's what's going to happen. Over time, not overnight, not after this one sermon, but over time, the emotion that used to follow the hurt is going to follow the conscious decision you made to cancel the debt and say, you don't owe me anymore. You may have to say it a thousand times. There's times I have to say that sometimes every day. In my years of pastoring, having, you know, people come and go through the years, oh, my goodness, without a goodbye, without a, con a conversation, disappearing, and no, I mean, I've had to take a collection of those and just learn to say, you know what? I feel there's kind of a debt there because, man, I've invested in you and we've had a relationship and, you know, we've been through a lot together and I feel at least I, you owe me a conversation. But I've had to say, you know what? You don't owe me anything. And you know when you get there, oh, my goodness, then you can go to that family reunion without expecting anything from anybody. You know, you're not in debt to me. I canceled that debt. You don't owe me anymore. You know how freeing that is? When you do that, now, look it. You'll be ready to use your hurt no longer as an excuse. Well, this is why I react that way. This is why I'm on edge. This is why I am. I keep people there. You'll take that hurt that you used as an excuse or maybe an explanation, and now, you'll be able to help someone else. Until you re get there, you're not going to be able to help people very much. And then you'll be able to take with the devil, the, the pain and shame that the devil wanted to bury you in, now you're going to be able to use it for God's glory. You may think, well, do, do, I, do I have to have a sit down and talk with them? Not necessarily. In fact, I'm going to recommend that you maybe don't. I mean, you go up to somebody and say, hey, buddy, I forgive you. <laughs> they're either going to slug you <laughs> or they're going to say, forgive me for what? What are you talking about? They might not even know how they hurt you. They might not even care. They might be entrenched in the reason why they're still mad at you. But see, that's between them and God. You've got to clear your own heart out. Get rid of that poison. Get rid of that to toxicity. And one of the ways you do that is you forgive not from the head. Well, I did that. I forgot. No, from the heart. Feel it. Express it. Mourn it. Put it to death. And realize they can't pay you back anyways. But now you're going to heal from it. And now God's going to use you in a mighty way. I want to leave this in prayer as we close. Some of you might not be ready to pray this prayer. Fair warning. You may need to do a little bit more homework. Go home, get a notebook, begin to write down, identify. You could have a whole page full of things that you feel were taken from you, you missed out on. Identify it, feel it, and then come to this point where you can pray this prayer. And some of you may need to listen to this message 10 times a day. <laughs> or at least say that phrase. I cancel your debt to me. You don't owe me anymore until it moves from the head to the heart. And then you'll be ready to pray this prayer. And if you know of somebody in your heart that came to mind, pray it from your heart, and that healing process can begin even right now. Let's say this to Gerd. Dear, Dear Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, I recognize that at the cross, I lost my right to not forgive. forgive. Thank you for forgiving me all of my sin against you. Lord, I've been harboring anger in my heart against... Now you fill in the blank. Take a moment here. Who's that person? Who's that group of people that you've been harboring some anger in your heart? Come on. You've got to be honest with yourself. It's touched us all to some degree. It's been a part of your past. It's a part of your present. It's time now to let it go. Lord, 
I feel, feel like, like they, they have, have taken, taken from me. me. You fill in the blank. Love, family, marriage, respect. Just pause there for a moment. And Lord, right, right now, now I'm, I'm choosing, choosing to cancel, cancel their, their debt. debt. They, they don't, don't owe me anymore. anymore. Please allow, allow my painful, painful memories to be a reminder of your grace, forgiveness, and healing in me. I don't want to inflict this pain on the people around me anymore. I let go of unforgiveness so I can walk in freedom and healing from this point forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your healing word, God. Thank you for the forgiveness that we've received. We didn't deserve it, but you gave it anyways. There's people in our life who may not deserve it, but we need to give it anyways. And we make a decision to do that, knowing that you'll help that to go from our head to our heart so we can truly understand the depth of the forgiveness that you taught us. We thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Hey, share the broadcast. You're going to see this come up. There's people that you know need to hear this word. Make sure you share that around today. All right? God bless you. Have a great week.